Hey everyone, it's me Brooke and today we are going to be talking about Hoyas. Um, lots and lots and lots of Hoyas. Um, I've been kind of buying up a storm of Hoyas lately and I thought it would be cool to show with you what I've gotten but also just talk about them and kind of how they do in my microclimate because they seem to be one of my most successful plants, I guess you would say. Um, they have a lot of personality for me. Like, if plants can have personality, they're pretty cool. This is Compactu Manu Loa uh, from Crystal Star Nurseries, one of my favorite nurseries. Um, and yeah, these plants are just amazing. Um, they're fairly easy to root. They come in all different shapes and sizes. This is a compacta, which means it's gonna have really curly leaves. Um, and this one is a particularly, a particularly um, beautiful plant because it has inner variegation. That's what the Manuloa strain of it is. Um, there's some really cool ones like Jody's Silver. Um, which is one of the most expensive Hoyas and is this beautiful super duper splashy uh, Hoya with lots and lots of silver on it like it's like my gray ghost which is also growing by the way I'm super excited it's like my gray ghost but it's in a compacter form so it's like silver like this but compact um, really really cool uh, I'm really excited to see that one hopefully pop up more in Canada if people start to take care of them in, in Canada and can get their hands on them although they are like supposedly very very difficult plants so yeah uh, that was my little <laughs> uh, rant not rant um, little info about uh, Compacta Jody's Silver, but why don't we talk about some different Hoyas and yeah, let's just get into, into some different Hoyas. Um, the first one here is my Hoya Linearis. Uh, she's gorgeous. She's also from Crystal Star Nurseries. Um, nursery, sorry. Um, she has two growth points it looks like. There's a second one starting over here. Um, I just have a clip here for now um, while I was training her to trail down because before she was trellised up so I wanted to start to get her to trail down so I just did a little clip in a safe spot um, to get her to flow down like a little waterfall um, but she is gorgeous sorry there's not really a point to this video this is just gonna be me talking about Hoyas and yeah, if you're kind of interested in like something kind of like podcasty to listen to, you don't really have to watch this unless you want to see the Hoyas that I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so this is Hoya Linearis. Um, super gorgeous. I don't know if you can see, but they're actually quite fuzzy, kind of like a Topsy eye, but really quite gorgeous. This is one really cute leaf here. Who's just like, I'm gonna be a fish hook. And <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so yeah, that is my Hoylinaris. Um, the flowers on these guys are gorgeous. Uh, they're like white and creamy. They're beautiful, beautiful flowers. Um, but yeah, you can see she's growing actively. And she's pretty large. Um, about almost my full, at least half of my forearm. Um, she's quite large though and beautiful. Yeah, that's my Hoya Linearis. So next up is one of my favorite Hoyas. This is Hoya Bermanica. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Really, really pretty. I actually, I've had, so some people, well actually not some people, me. I think it kind of looks like a Polyneura leaf shape wise. Um, as you can see. I actually prefer this over Polyneura. Um, it has these dark ridges, it's satiny, 
and mine has some little splashes too which is kind of cool I hope it continues giving off those splashes and I actually prefer the flowers on this one so and mine has three pentacles so hopefully fingers crossed knock on wood I can get this one to flower for me um, but yeah this is Hoya Bermanica one of my ultimate like very very favorite Hoyas <laughs> so yeah another new one is one that is was one of my very first original um, just stunning Hoyas this is Hoya Hokusheliana and you might be thinking um, Brooke that does not look like a Hoya Hokusheliana they're green they're not this vibrant red pink color that is because Hoyas can sun stress and this one in particular has been sun stressed quite a lot I got a cutting from a plant that had been sun stressed quite a lot and in result she is quite the beautiful beautiful red mahogany color that she is she actually does have a little pentacle with blooms but since she is a cutting she is rooting in Lakusa for me uh, or is going to hopefully root in Lakusa for me uh, I believe she took a shelly and a yellow because of the little kind of like shell like leaves that's the difference that I found for my first because I have a yellow and a pink um, and I found the yellow in comparison to the pink had more cupped leaves I did buy a pink to I mean I bought a yellow but it actually turned out to be pink which I don't mind because I did sell my big pink which I regretted um, and so I was so happy to have a big pink back in my <laughs> big pink a big size Hokusheliana pink back in my collection who bloomed for me and a really cool thing about Hokusheliana is it actually smells like popcorn when they bloom and it's quite strong um, not like you popcorn it smells like good popcorn like movie theater popcorn if you like that smell it smells just like that so yeah Ooh, take a deep breath <laughs> I love I love talking about Hoyas when I start talking about them I don't take breaths in between because I just love like oh there's this and then there's that and there's this too and I love this about them and they're so so cool and it's like whoa okay <laughs> um, this is Hoya Apache Clatter Red um, it is also cutting from a lovely lovely seller who I also got that Hokusheliana from um, Patrick Clada is a really awesome Hoya. I've been looking for this one for a while. I had one, it had root rot when I got it and it died. <laughs> so I was like, no. Um, I tried rerooting it, it would not reroot for me. Um, uh, one piece did, but then I tried to convert it back into the medium I wanted to grow it in. And it was like, peace out, and it just died. So, uh, that happened and so I wanted to try again because Pachi Clada is one of my favorite Hoyas because like look at this thing it has sub subtle veining <laughs> subtle veining um, the red has sometimes it gets sun blushed corners um, or it looks like this one just has naturally red corners um, the undersides are so so cool they're very angular and geometric they flower easily. They have super thick leaves. Like if I were to do the taco test on this one, it does not blend, bend at all. Um, and for those of you who are wondering what the taco test is, it's pretty much where if you go like this on a leaf, on thick leaf plants, um, and you have to be very, very gentle and only do it to enough that if it can bend easily, it will. If not, then you don't push any harder and that means it's good. But that's not really a true way of telling if watering. That's, that's a whole nother story. I'll just <laughs> get back to the way it is. Um, but Pachi Clotter Red. This one has a tiny, tiny little pentacle on it. I don't think it's going to stick around. Um, my Pachi Clotta X Parasitica has a lovely big pentacle on it. And I'm hoping to get it to bloom. Um, because it's just a lovely little Hoya. Um, and it's growing very actively for me. So yeah. But this is Pachi Clutter Red. 
Some people, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I say pachiclata. Some people say pachiclata. Others say pachiclata or something similar to that. But I just call it pachiclata. Um, next up, one that's also been on my wish list for a long time. As you may be able to see the theme here. This is Spatanganesis. Spatanganesis? Spatanganesis. It's gorgeous. It has these lovely leaves. Um, I'm also rooting this one. This one I got as a cutting as well. Same as the Pachiclata and the Hookashelliana yellow. I think it's a Hookashelliana yellow. It looks like it would be a yellow because the buds are yellow. Because it has a little pentacle with little buds. Um, but yeah, this is Spatanganesis. Uh, I think that's right. Um, and this one has some pretty little splashes on it. Um, it's a pretty beautiful cutting. Um, I'm really excited about it. So hopefully it will root for me well. Um, I seem to be having... Oh, that's a good point. I seem to be having a lot of luck in Lacusa Pond, which is a um, semi-hydroponic substrate. Substrate? Medium. Um, it's not so dissimilar to Leica. Um let me see if I can find a little... So this is Lacusa, semi-hydroponic substrate. In it is lava rock, pumice, zeolite, and osmocote. Which, in this little handful, I didn't get any osmocote. Oh no, there's a little piece of osmocote. You can't see it though. Um, but you can see it's a lot tinier than Leica. This is like a smaller size like a ball. I got it with this other cutting that I'm going to show you. Um, it was grown in Leica. Um, and it's one of my favorite plants. It was one of my first Hoyas too. I sold my big one. I seem to sell a lot of my favorite Hoyas and then regret it later. So I'm going to be trying to like more collect this year and not sell as much. Um, just yeah. <laughs> on a weird side note um, but yeah this is Lacusa really really cool substrate almost all my Hoyas grow in it and I've had so much success with it it's crazy it's one of my favorite growing mediums now I even use it for my aeroids I'll show you the bag it comes in a bag like this with I didn't know it had a zipper opening when I opened this, so I just cut open the top of it, like a bad way to do it. So yeah, that's Lacusa Pond, that's the bag it comes in. Um, I've been loving it, my Hoyas are loving it, <laughs> my Aeroids are loving it. I haven't tried it on any orchids yet, um, but I have tried it on my one of my big boys and he loves it this is my dark lord he sorry excuse the dirty leaves but he loves it he's shooting out a new leaf and he also has a new growth point um, it looks like that's what it is at least um, but he is a big plant too um, and like if I try to pick him up comes out of the pot with that so he's rooted himself pretty nicely in there um, so yeah so let's talk about the next plant that was my speaker going off because I was playing music before this okay so this Hoya I absolutely adore was one of my first like rarish Hoyas um, and I immediately fell in love with this plant not only because of its sun stressing abilities um, but also because of just how gorgeous the leaves are they have these really delicate veins I don't know if I can capture it there you go you can kind of see it these really really delicate veins um, and they root like crazy like that's a crazy root system um, but 
this plant is absolutely insane. I got, I've, so <laughs> I'm really bad with some plants. Um, I love them and I get them as cuttings um, through trades or through buying and I am a bit of an overreactor and I had to learn this the hard way. I killed quite a few really nice cuttings um, and that's sometimes how you learn with plants. Um, and <laughs> my, my humidifier did the bubble thing again. And although it sucks and it you feel horrible about it, sometimes that's just how you learn with them. I killed probably four or five cuttings of Fusco marginata, which is this plant here. Um, and then I also succeeded with quite a few cuttings, probably like 10 of them, because I had this really, really big plant and I took a lot of cuttings off of it and the first couple I completely butchered. Um, and then the next few I just stayed consistent with and I was, okay, so probably I should explain how I succeeded first. Um, so at first I was really switching. I was like, they're not rooting, they're not rooting. Why aren't they rooting? I was switching up the medium too much because I was like, it's not rooting in this. I give it like only a few days. And then I switched to another medium. Oh, it's not rooting in this either. Oh, it's not rooting in this one either. Oh my gosh, it's not rooting. And then it ended up, the transport shock is like, whoa, what are you doing? Like, I don't like this. And then it died, <laughs> which makes sense. Um, and I had to learn that lesson a few times. And then I was like, okay, maybe I should just give it a bit more time, which you're probably listening to this, you're being like, that is really dumb. And I agree with that because I was just starting my plant journey and I was like, people are like rooting these things super quick. Like why isn't it working for me? And it ended up being, I was just not approaching it the right way. Um, but <laughs> this is gonna be a long video, sorry. Um, but I kept on approaching it the wrong way and I also wasn't thinking, I was thinking what's easiest not what's the easiest for the plant. So that's a big mindset change that I had to make. And after working with a lot of cuttings um, and finding what's successful, which I'm happy to share with you guys if you'd be interested in a video about that, I would love to do that video. Um, I probably will do that video. <laughs> um, but after a whole bunch of work into figuring it out, I finally mastered it, mastered it. I still have a lot to learn. Um, but for me, I tried water, I figured that out. Then I tried soil, I figured some of that out. Some plants really work well in that. Like for example, Mathild, they work really well in that. You can see here actually, there's a new root starting after only a few days. And look who's a pond. Um, and there's some plants that just work super well in soil, like Mathilde and Bella, um, the Hoyas. Um, and then there's other plants that are like, psych, I'm not gonna root at all in soil, and it's gonna take forever, and you're gonna have to monitor me. So, uh, then I switched to trying pumice and, um, pumice and mini Leica. um, uh, which you, if you watched, uh, Lucia's video with me showing my soil mix, Pretty much just, I mixed pumice and the mini Lika together and washed it thoroughly so the dust is off of it. And then I, root, I rooted some plants in that. It worked super well for a couple plants. And then I went and bought a bag of Lakuza and was like, everyone's raving about this stuff. Or specifically one person I know who is awesome with Hoyas. Um, and she was like, this is the best. I love this stuff. I have almost all my plants in this, like my big name Hoyas, and I was like, okay, this sounds pretty magical, I should give it a try. And then I tried it, and it was magical. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, and I adore it for rooting now. I have almost all my Hoyas. I have, out of probably 15 Hoyas in front of me here, one is not in Lakuza. Um, and the other ones, either I'm too scared to move, 
because they're growing right now or they are just like they're expensive Hoyas like my gray ghost who's still in soil but I would love to move once she finishes growing this leaf and a couple more leaves on that vine I'll probably move her um, but yeah that's a little breakdown of Lakuza. I need to breathe for a second. Sorry, I get like worked up talking about Hoyas because I just get so excited. But my other plants that aren't in Lakuza are because I'm acclimating them to my household. So for example, these crystal star ones, they're in sphagnum right now. And one thing that sucks about sphagnum is you can never get all that sphagnum moss off. So what I end up doing, and this sounds horrible, um, is I end up just chopping it all off, all the roots off when transitioning to Lakuza. Um, and I will show you an example of one of the converted Hoyas into Lakuza. Um, that is also from Crystal Star. So this is Vitalina. Um, she's a gorgeous Hoya. Um, she just grew this beautiful new leaf. A little wonky wonky but very very pretty nonetheless um, these are like turtle shell leaves they're so freaking thick um, but pretty much what I did is I was like okay I'm gonna chop off all of the roots and this is what I was instructed to do by who uh, the really awesome Hoya person that I know I don't know if she wants me to say her name because I don't want to like <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I don't want to just like put her name up there, but um, from that really awesome Hoya person, um, she was like, yeah, cut off all the roots, only keep health roots that are like 99% healthy. And so I did that, and it pushed out a new leaf within a couple weeks, and there's roots all around here. So there's one there, one there one there a really nice long one <laughs> um, just and it works so well um, my a couple of my well almost all my Hoyas I do that for now um, also with the aeroids I try to do that too um, and I find it works really really well so if you want to try it Lakuza I would go for it um, because it's just awesome and if you um, are sorry <laughs> if you're looking to try out um just Lakusa in general I would either try to find someone who already has it and just get a little bit from them or order from the site and get a little bag um, I I went all in and bought two big bags, but I was, if I didn't like it, I would have been stuck with two big bags and then I would have had to sell them, um, which would have been harder because they would have been like opened. Um, so I would start small and then go big rather than what I did. Um, but I luckily just loved it and it works super well in my little microclimate in these, in both my grow tent downstairs and up here. It just works so well so yeah um why don't I show you some more Hoyas um the Fusco Marginata so a really cool thing about this plant <laughs> is I was talking to someone who grows it and she's flowered it before she's a beautiful big plant um she's like so I adore this plant but I hate it at the same time and I was like what she's like yeah I kind of hate it I'm like how can you hate this plant she's like well when it blooms sometimes I think about cutting off the pentacles and I'm like what how could you do that and she's like it smells like sweaty teenagers and I'm like I don't blame you um after being to high school I don't blame you one bit um <laughs> and I was like just I was at first I was like how could someone cut off a pentacle and then I was like Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I I feel bad for you when it blooms. Um, Cause there's some Hoyas that smell like, people have described them as like garbage juice. Um, and that's one of those Hoyas. So I, I love it for its foliage. The flowers are gorgeous too. But the smell, I, from what I've heard is just 
a no-go for me. Um, the next Hoya, who's in dirt, uh, is a really cool Hoya. This is Halcyonis. Halcyonis. Um, it's a thin, thinner stemmed Hoya. And the leaves are not like your typical popular big leaf, chunky, variegated Hoya. These guys are more, um, how do I describe? Very, very thin, like a multiflora. And, but just very gorgeous too. Almost like a, uh, not a booty eye. Uh, not an Oichi and Eyes either. It's, it's pretty unique. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's gorgeous though to me. I love it. And also the name. Um, I used to lease a horse named Halcyon. And Halcyononius. Nisus. Halcyoninus. Ninius. Something like that. I cannot pronounce the name. But it's spelled like Halcyon. It's pretty cool. So yeah. Um, next up on the list. Is the classic, the stunning, the beautiful multiflora. So multiflora, this plant has been kind of an on and off plant for me. I had one, I sold it. I had one, I sold it. I have another one. I'm loving it right now. Um, uh, I think it's just you kind of have to find the right one because it had a really big one. Well, I, oh, actually it was more medium sized. I sold it because I didn't love it. It wasn't happy, very happy with me. So I made sure it was happy and then I sold it. And then I had another one. It was pretty happy with me. I made sure it was happy, but I just didn't love it because it would, I just, it, it wasn't the right plant for me. And I sold it and then I saw this one. Um, well then I, and then I was like, okay, I should probably try again. I wasn't expecting too many high expectations. Well, I didn't have very high expectations. And then I saw it in person. And I was like, oh my god. I am so happy with this plant right now. <laughs> and it's budding. Um, I think the reason that I didn't fall in love with the other one is I got it almost so close to blooming. And then it blasted its buds. And I was like, ah, why did you do this to me? <laughs> why did you do this to me? Um, because I was so excited because it would have been my first way to bloom. Um, and yeah, long story short, I sold it because I was like, I don't think I'll ever succeed with this one. And then I fell in love with another one and I, well, I didn't fall in love with it. I saw it and I was like, whoa, that's really beautiful. Why did I sell my other one? And then I sold that one too because it just, it, it didn't meet up with my expectations. But then I got a variegated one, um, uh, and it did super well for me, um, and it looks just like this one, but not variegated, <laughs> um, so yeah, I got another multiflora, long story short, I think I'm gonna be keeping this one, but we'll see what happens, um, and then, of course, I got another multiflora, but this is SV406. Look at the size of these. It's like as long as my forearm, and I'm like right up close to it. Look at the size of these bottom leaves. Um, SV406, which is a multiflora, is arguably one of my favorite multiflora variants. Um, it's just so stunning. The flowers aren't that much different, but the leaves make a difference for me. I love the look of them. Um, they're darker. They don't, here I'll hold this one up for, they're not as wavy and they're not as rippled too. So here's a little, and they're thinner. Um, and they can get big leaves, man. Um, so yeah, that's SV406, or Multiflora SV406. They, this guy I heard pushes out new leaves consistently. Um, like most Multifloras, they grow like a weed. Um, so yeah, that's SV406. Um, let's take a second to talk about this plant here. 
So this was, it's really funny, because uh, I had two really big plants of these, and I sold them, because I thought I was getting out of Hoyas, and I was going to focus on aeroids. I was like, I'm going to dedicate all of my space to aeroids, and then I sold most of my Hoyas, and I was like, I miss my Hoyas. <laughs> so I was like, why did I sell these big versions of these beautiful plants for like, just like it was a good great price um so i'm happy someone who loves hoyas got those hoyas um but uh, <laughs> i regretted it in the end so this is my hoya rigida um she actually has pink splash she's from one of my favorite hoya people hoya people <laughs> um I did something very similar. I cut off all the roots, which was very scary for me, and I transitioned her to the Lakuza, and she is taken off. She just shot out this new vine, and I am ready to see those new leaves. Um, so yeah, that is, oh, I forgot to say what she's called. This is Hoya Rigida, and it looks like a very thin leaf variant almost. Who should I talk about next? My melon are cries in the back, you're like, you should talk about me, because I'm pretty cool. Uh, sorry, Miss Melon are cries in, but we are not getting talked about today, because today is not an aeroid video, which I might do in the future, but still. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about another plant that I, I, I uh, did the Lacusa treat, the Lacusa treatment on. Um, it's not a treatment, but this is Hoya Ada. Uh, she is stunning. Um, this new leaf is super healthy. I haven't gotten to touch it yet because it finally just, well, I given I, I try to give them a couple, like a week or two or longer before I start like touching them and being like, I love you. Can I pet you please? Um, um, but this is my, well, when they harden off. Um, this is my Hoya Ada. It's arguably one of my favorite Hoyas, I say that about all my Hoyas, <laughs> they're all my favorites because I've been trying to be really selective about who I pick and who I don't pick. Um, but she has a little growth point, yes! Um, I'm so excited about that. Um, I might make this into a cutting and replant in here. So yeah, this is Hoya Ada. Um, not too much to say about this one, I'm still learning about her. Um, but she's really, really cool. Yeah, almost reminds me of Parasitica. Also, this isn't a or um, this isn't a Hoya, but just because she's in bloom right now. Look at how stunning she is. This is Tespertus alba green um, from Roehampton orchids. Really, really nice plant. Super excited about her. She's just gonna chill back here. Sorry for the mess on my desk, by the way. I've been working a lot and, well not working, I've been working from, on my business a lot. So I have a whole bunch of just like random, like I have a distilled water jug, some Lacusa, my melon is on my desk so you can block out some of that other stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me talk about Hoyas. I loved having you here, and I hope you will join me for another video soon. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a great night, and keep up with your planting. Bye!